So what's uh, what's the new look of the big blue wall? Does it look completely different? Or? <laughs> um, as I say, I don't feel like I feel like this line is rebuilt. I feel like it's really just reloaded. We've added some. We've had some great talent. We've had um, like my boy Tayshon, who's in the mix now. Um, but it's just at the at the end of the day, it's we've built, we've established a culture with the Big Blue Wall, and whoever comes whoever comes into that culture, coaches believe that they're a best that they'll fit greatly within that culture. And I believe Tayshon and the new guys coming in, I feel like they're doing a great job doing that. Just being just being hard nosed guys, just bring your hard hat to work kind of guys. You know, just excited to see what. The spring and fall has to say about it. Yeah, how much have you, uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about tackle, how much have you been working there at guard? Um, for now, I've been mostly working out guard. Uh, we've uh, put in different, trying different things at tackle, but at the end of the day, if the team needs me uh, to be out there at tackle, I'll, obviously I'm more than willing to do it. But I have more than enough faith in our guys that haven't got a, haven't got a shot yet. You know, like Dion, like Flax, guys like that, that they've been putting in the time, putting in the work. Because I remember, when I, because Dion's on his third year now, and I was, remember, I was starting, I came into the, starting from not playing a lot in my third year. So I know, I remember exactly what that was like. So it's just about, um, just about being that, being the leader that I, that I had when I was coming up. I had, I got the opportunity to play against Landon, play against, uh, play against Landon and Drake. So it's just being that, just being that leader, being that old guy for those, for those young guys who just need that extra help, extra step along, because this, this job is not easy. You mentioned players fitting into the culture. How's the new coach doing with the culture too? <clears throat> he embodies it perfectly. Um, it's honestly a small world, the fact that he was uh, coached by Slarman previously, but I feel that, that um, I feel like that speaks to the legacy of Coach Slarman. We always, we constantly think about how we leave our legacies. And I honestly believe Coach Lorman's legacy was bigger than what he did in this building. You know, there's people like Coach Yenzer and Coach Mack, who's with Troy now. And even even Drake, just just compliments of that legacy of the person Coach Lorman was. And Coach Yenzer is no different. He's passionate, he's hardworking, and I'm excited to keep working with him and get better. What what is it like to have, you know have him and a guy like Drake who's kind of you knows what you all been through been you know kind of been part of that you know culture that you, just what does that do to kind of motivate you guys? Oh, uh, it definitely. I don't think we need any extra motivation, but I definitely believe it helps us. It helps us get all of the information possible. It helps us from a coach's perspective, from a player's perspective, and the fact that we the fact that we all know Drake. The fact that he Drake's even on the back of a wall in the offensive <laughs> line room. It's just stuff like it's just um, you just know that when these guys are talking to you, they have your best interest at heart. And they have the best interest of the team at heart. So you take that, you take those teachings and you try to apply them even more because at the end of the day you know that we have a coach, that a professional coach coming from the 49ers, and we have an experienced, we have an experienced player here who's been in the league, Drake's been in the league as well, so he has, so he's been able to take what he's learned in his time in the league and then help us with this as well. So it's just just feels good to have the to have just both sides just being able to communicate well. When you hear that your new coach is coming from the NFL and is a guy that's you know coached a physical team like that, I mean, what's your what was your initial impression of that? Uh, I was excited because I know the 49ers play great physical football and I know that's what we try to play here as well so um, again coach Yenzer he's him being a professional he knows exactly what it takes to get to lead, to get the job done at the highest level so like I said before when he's when he says something we listen because we he was literally just in the NFC championship a couple months ago so what's it like for a lineman on the day you get to put the pads back Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a great day for linemen because that's when all, because that's when all the uh, junk talking ceases. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you're not in pads, guys like, got you, 
when you put the pads on, you see who's really about it and who's not. <laughs> and we love that on offensive linemen because we finally get, because you can't go full out if you're not in pads as an offensive lineman. So it just gives us the opportunity to get better. It gives us the opportunity to uh, stay physical. We love, as you've seen in our games, we love hard-nosed physical games. Practice is no different. That defensive line is going to get us right every time. They have a lot of talent over there on the ball still. So it just feels good to um, be back out there in pads, just hitting people again, getting them shoulders warm. <laughs> you, uh, what, what can we expect from you, and what do you expect from yourself this year? Um, what you can expect from me is my very best. What you can expect from me is everything I got. Because at the end of the day, I've had, I've had the privilege of watching generation after generation after generation of guys and the offensive linemen lead, watch them excel, watch them go to the NFL and still compete. So at the end of the day, I don't, I don't want to be, don't want to say I don't want to be any different from those guys. But at the same way, I'm going to play. I'm going to play my way. I'm going to play to my strength, and I'm going to do what I have to do to make sure these young guys are right. Make sure this O line is right. Make sure this team is right. Because at the end of the day, I feel like the biggest, the biggest difference in the success of a team, especially our team, is our accountability. The way we stay, we stay on our guys about things. So we, we can't let the we can't let the little things slide. We gotta be gotta have that attention to detail. And I feel like it's my job now. It's Eli's job. It's our old. It's the older guys job to make sure that these younger younger guys are ready and willing to make sure that they're doing whatever is necessary for the success of the team. Speaking of those younger guys, how does a kid who's highly regarded like Cal take him and take some of that medicine and, and, and embrace learning from, from you? Cal is a great kid. Great kid. <laughs> Big kid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's just, he's very passionate. He's willing. He's willing to put in the work. He's very coachable. He's ready to. He's ready to listen to anything that we, if any, if we have any positive criticisms or anything like that. And even if we have to jump on him at times, he's very accepting of that because he knows. Because he knows he's not a finished product. He knows at the end of the day, high school is just the beginning. So there's always room for progression. There's always room to grow, and he understands that. And he's ready to put in that work. And I love and I love to see him work because he's working on himself every day. Do you have any flashbacks to maybe like when you first got out there? Oh. When you think about a kid like that, and you know what you didn't know, you thought you may have thought you knew. Mm -hmm. I think about I think about stuff like that often. I try to uh, now that I'm the old head on the team and in the room and stuff. I try to display. I'm trying to. Uh, talk to those guys about things like that, things that I didn't know coming in and what it really took. Because people really don't understand what it takes to be an SEC collegiate athlete until they do it. And obviously, if you, obviously you're coming in at 17, 18 years old, when you're leaving 22, 23, that's one of the most pivotal years of your life when you learn so many things about yourself, you know, and about work ethic and about how to just how to compete and how to survive, not just in this building, but in the real world as well, which uh, I believe the coaches do a great job with that, just not just about what's going on in here, about how it translates to outside of this. So, um, yeah. Each coach teaches young men differently. These days, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't coach them all the same way, right? Sure. So, to me, that points to the fact of how you all mesh together, how this coach's personality meshes with your personality. And uh, do you see that as a work in progress or how do you see it going? Um, like you said, each coach coaches differently. I've seen the differences, differences in coaching from Foreman to Wolf to Yenza. But at the, at the end of the day, like I said, when, you, when we've established a culture, it doesn't matter who's co who that coach is because we know at the end of the day what we need to do to be successful. We've had, we've had the opportunity of having great coaches come in here and coach us over the years. So, and unfortunately, we're fortunate with there have been times where we've had to continue coaching and just doing our thing without a coach in the room, like when Schwarman went down and things like that. 
So we've established, we've established a culture that it doesn't matter who that guy in the room is. As long as we're doing what we need to do, we know everything's gonna be fine.